Good morning, everyone. I uh, just want to say, I pray that you're doing well and that you're happy and you're smiling. I know it's just been a long haul. Some of us are not ready to be in our homes and all this other stuff going on and all the doubt and fear and concern. But we're going we're gonna to start off with a prayer today. We're just going to ask God to have his way. So, Lord Jesus, we ask you right now, Lord, that you would touch our entire church, Lord, and that you would encourage and strengthen and, and excite people, Lord. Give them, give them a heart of excitement, Lord God, of what you're doing in this world and what you're doing in our lives, Lord. Loosen the things that hold us bound, O oh God, and allow us to see your truth and to jump forward into it, O oh God. You are the answer, Lord. You've always been the answer, and we thank you for that. Let us see it clearly in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's just great to be with everybody today. Uh, this is April 30th, 2020, and uh, we are coming out of the pandemic thing. I'm, I'll be glad when we're not even saying that word anymore. But who knows? We live in a new world. There's able to, for these viruses and stuff to travel and do stuff. So there's no telling what the future looks like. But I do know God will be in it. I'll be serving God. My family will be serving God. Our church will be serving God. And we will be winning souls, all of the above, and helping people survive their life. Amen. And make it safely to heaven. It's just good, good to be serving God. Now, our upcoming schedule is this. Our schedule is... This uh, coming, uh, tonight we have home group, and it'll be available on Facebook. It'll be a link on Facebook to a home group. Now, we might not have all of our home groups on there, but there'll be something available. So if you want to go to a home group tonight, you'll be able to go to one. Ours will be hosted by my wife. Uh, I will be in a board meeting with Urshan College. It's a very busy day, but that's quite all right. Um, she's going to be doing that tonight. And then we will be having a parking lot service on our brand new a seal coated parking lot at the church. We will be doing that this Sunday at 10, 10 a.m. We will be out there at the church. Why don't you come just a few minutes early? You'll be able to stay within the parameter of your vehicle. You can open the door, raise your hands and worship. Sunday's supposed to be one of the most beautiful days we've had in the longest of time. Uh, come and join us. If you've never been to the church, uh, then come on out. You'll love this. It's a time of, I mean, we're basically having outside church. It's a real great time. We're still using social distancing because we want to be cautious. and uh, But we'll be able to see everybody, wave at everybody, even have conversations with each other. That's going to be nice. And let's see, I think that's about it on that. At this time, I'll let my wife to come. And we are going to spend some time with you together. Yeah, anytime you turn on this and I'm all the way over on the side, <laughs> that means she's coming. Now, for any of those who want a very basic Bible study and a, a glimpse into the Bible, uh, come to our Elements class. Uh, that's one of the classes we've been doing. It's yes. Elements starts with Elements uh, 1. It should say class, uh, Lesson 1 or something like that. But it's called Elements. And then just recently, I started one called Enemies We Face. And I'm on Lesson 3 today sometime. Now, that <laughs> might even uh, roll into tomorrow. tomorrow. Because right. you've got board meetings all day long, so that's yeah, going to be so difficult to That's going to be complicated. Fit in. Yeah. So probably tomorrow. tomorrow. My goal was to do the, the victory of the church on Friday, but I think I might end up doing that on Monday or maybe Saturday. So uh, really it takes a little bit more than expected to do these videos. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of prep time and some other stuff that goes into it. So thanks for being patient. But you'll find those on our site. And then I also want to recommend... Uh, Jeff Arnold, that is an amazing site. Also, mm -hmm. uh, Brother Chester Wright. Yes. Both of those are prophetic elders that are capable. Also, go to Mike E's site. He has some incredible videos that he's been producing. Uh, this, is a, this is a time, the rise of the prophets. It's a time when God, uh, you know, uh, people have told us about uh, our churches, you know, uh, some Pentecostal churches, not just UPC, but we're a non-for-profit. Ha! Huh. We don't have any profits, non-profit. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, that's not what you want to do. You want voices speaking into your life constantly. And those voices are not just voices to hear, they're voices to listen to. Recently, I've been reading Jeremiah, and it's very clear mm -hmm. that they were not listening. And even Jeremiah said, you know, uh, surrender to Babylon. But the king refused to surrender to Babylon. Mm -hmm. And what happened? His eyes were put out, his kids were put to death, and he was taken into slavery. 
But mm. the other ones who were obedient to the king of Babylon were taken and were just ate at his table every day. And in other words, had a had a, a very highly esteemed life. And uh, praise the Lord. I mean, that, right. that that's what what's happened. You want to greet anybody today? Oh, it's good to see everybody out there. Of course, I'm, I don't know who I'm seeing as I kind of look into the into the view there. But but no, I, I saw Heather on. I saw Heather this morning. Hello, so, Heather. Good morning, Heather. <laughs> I pray that your day is fantastic. And we'll shout out. I know Eric watches. and yes. I know there's lots of folks that watch. God bless y'all. It's been a good time for us. Amen. Okay, okay let's get started. Here. All right. Uh, what we want to do today is talk to you for a few minutes about 10 ways to teach your children integrity. Very Now, the word integrity is mm -hmm. a very simple word. Uh, one of those, you know, $50 words. <laughs> but when you condense it down to 50 cents, where we can afford it, uh, it ends up being lying. How to teach your children not to lie. And it's kind of, about, it's kind of like who your children are when no one is watching them. And they find themselves potentially in a situation where it tests their character. So, yeah. And these are real basic. Sure. So we'll jump in there. And we do this together because we just want to see, show y'all us. And you know, a lot of things, more things are caught than are taught. Sure. Uh, there's things you pick up, little innuendos right. and stuff. And, and what we want to do is share what a Christian family looks like when it is uh, relatively mature. I hope we're mature. <laughs> and uh, Well, we're mature by the fact that we sure. have all adult children. Right. And that we have eight grandchildren. Right. And uh, nine. Well, baby number nine is almost here. Sarah is due in, in the oven. May the 15th. So we're only two weeks away from that one. My little baby Sarah is having a baby. Crazy. Crazy. Crazy, crazy baby. <laughs> well, uh, that's, that's some of it. My wife and I have uh, owned probably six companies. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife has run one of our companies for years. All sorts of different things have taken place. Uh, we've moved all over the place, mm -hmm. and uh, God has been really good to us. So yes, we're trying to yeah. bring that forward and say, look, we've had a lot of mile experience, and uh, we just we just have found the, some of these principles to be founded in truth. So yes. I'm going to start with number one, and that is um, this one really complicated, and it's a lot of words. Mm -hmm. uh, drive the speed limit. Pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting that you got number one and it's drive the speed limit. But, I mean, and the reason that's on there is because the speed limit is how you're living your life every day, practically, maybe not every day anymore, but in the future, every day in the vehicle. And children are attentive to what we are doing when no one is looking. So it's a rule that our government has set out there that, that you have to govern your own self. Basically, and, and I'm I'm going to confess here. I mean, I this is an area I mess up constantly. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. thankful for folks that do remind. I mean, a few years ago, I think DJ jumped in on the bandwagon. He's an adult, and he just decided, you know, I'm going to drive the speed limit. And people were kind of lining up behind him. And I I understand those things. I appreciate it. You want that principle to be there. We right. don't want to be liars, right? Right. Or rule breakers. <clears throat> or rule breakers. That's yeah, better. Yeah. Rule breakers. Absolutely. And number two is. Never ask your child to lie for you. <clears throat> I'm always amazed at parents that will that will do that, you know? I mean... And it's I, way more common than you think. It really is. It is. Because, you know, parents find themselves in these tricky or these sticky spots, and, and their children have to represent them, and so they tell the child, you know, to lie for them, basically, whether it's... Whether, regardless of what it has to do with, even if they're tiny lies, a lie is a lie. And so children need to recognize that their authority, their parent, is not going to ask them to do something that's against the scriptures. Don't ask your children to lie for you. Yeah, I'll throw in a real quick example of that is that we had a friend once that was hunting over a bait stand. And that's okay. You can, there are certain places you can hunt over a bait stand. But it was a black bear bait stand and it ended up being a grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. Grizzly bear came up and they couldn't help themselves. They shot the grizzly bear. Well, they they took the grizzly bear down to their vehicle and then he looked at his sons who were probably eight or ten, or eight and ten, and told them that we we can't tell anybody that I shot this over a bait stand. And so he asked his kids to lie. They came to my house to show me the bear to kind of go mm -hmm. look at my bear. And lo and behold, uh, he had the kids lie to me, and and he lied to me. 
And then a little while later, he came back, probably a day later, his conscience was hurting him. He came back and he had to confess that what he had done. And I told him, I said, turn yourself in. I mean, get this thing clean. Get this mm -hmm. off your conscience. Let's yes. fix this thing. Yes. As far as possible, let's take the hit now and fix it. And literally, uh, the game warden came to me and appreciated everything. He said, but there's one thing mm -hmm. I cannot allow. And I said, what that? That he lied to you and made his kids lie to you first. And then, so he took his hunting license and his gun, and literally, uh, he had to wait three or four years before he could hunt again. Now, the man was upset with me. Uh, he said, I shouldn't have ever listened to you. I should have kept the lie. And I thought, no, I'm sorry. I'll take you being upset with me for me telling you to do the right thing. Right. And literally, he made it through it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the trooper especially just said, listen, we gotta, we got to stick to this. You can't, can't be lying. And you can't yeah. have your kids don't, lie for you. Don't have your kids lie for you. Yeah. So number three. Okay, apologize when you are when you wrong your children. Uh, I probably, the first time I learned to do this, my kids were probably, oldest was probably 11, 10 or 11, and I got them together. I had misjudged a situation, and I had blamed the wrong child, and um, sir, I just had to sit down with them all and just tell them I was sorry. And uh, it, was a, it was a breakthrough for us because it, at least it helped me mm -hmm. understand or let, allow my kids to know that everybody is not above the law. And, and <laughs> right. every, you know, even dad has to say he's sorry sometimes when he recognizes that he's wrong. And it's really worked to our favor. All of our kids are that way. When they're uh, wrong, they recognize that they've made a mistake. It kind of gives them permission, actually. It's, a, it's an interesting concept yeah. because most mm -hmm. of the times as parents <clears throat> or as adults, uh, the younger individuals, children around us, assume that we are always correct because we carry ourselves as if we are. But I think for them to realize, hey, I've made a mistake, and to recognize it and to say it out loud, ask for forgiveness, I'm sorry, you know, I made a mistake, I, I'm apologizing for this, for my attitude, or whatever, then what happens is you'll see your children adapt that, or adopt, excuse me, adopt that same practice that they will apologize when they are incorrect or wrong, and they're okay, it's easier for them to recognize, hey, I've made a mistake, and to bring it forward. So you're, you're kind of like emulating out, emulating, showing, right. uh, you know, the process for fixing things. Correct, yeah, so I, I love that one. Okay, number four, this one I thought was kind of interesting, and I, I don't know that I've really done this with this intent, but it, you know, all these things are really kind of cool. How many of you have actually thought before, Today I think I'm going to teach my children integrity. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I never did. I didn't think it like that. So, so it's interesting to have this concept and this thought. But okay, number four, send your child into a store with more money than they need to buy a particular item. When they come out of the store, see if they offer you the change. You know, the change from the ten dollar bill when you sent them in for a gallon of milk and some eggs or something, and you're sitting out in your car and you're working on your phone or whatever you're doing. What a concept. I mean, I've, I've got children that, number one, would, wouldn't have even take, won't take my money. And then I have children that will take my money. And then I have children that will take all of my money and keep it. And so, you know, it kind of depends on the child, really. It really does. But it's, it's interesting. What a concept, you know. Now, them I want to jump in here. My yeah. dad did this with me constantly. <laughs> all the time. He always wanted to know. I mean, I, if, if it was a dollar, he, he had already calculated what it was worth and what mm -hmm. things were. And he'd always ask me, you know, he, he'd take me through the process. And then if my pocket was full of change, I'd give the change back. Now, well, I would want to keep the change, <laughs> you know, but the thing is I gave the change to him and he would normally give it back to me or something like that. But mm -hmm. he would he would constantly say, you know, look, look at the process here. Uh, one little story that, um, I've always got a story, right? <laughs> yeah, I went to work, and um, I was a plumber, and I would end up at the end of the day with a bunch of copper fittings in my pocket. Well, when I came home, my dad would, he, he finally put out a bowl. It's a big wooden bowl. I still mm -hmm. have it. And he said, put all those copper fittings in there. And I put all the stuff out of my pockets in there. So that was what, leftover <laughs> stuff from Le jobs? Leftover kind of stuff, stuff that I brought that was from the truck, the job, okay, whatever, okay. little mm -hmm. parts. And I put them in there, and at the end, when it was full, I'd ask him, you know, what do I do with this? And, you know, I thought something like I get to cash it in or something or whatever. And he said, put it all in a bag and take it back to your boss because oh. it really belongs to him. So he would he would make me take it and give it back to my boss because mm -hmm. it really belonged to my boss. It right. didn't belong to me. Right. There's so many things that we have that we pick up that really belongs to our employer. True. But it doesn't really belong to us. So that, that's a process. It right. is. Okay, oh, here, I'm great. not going to spend a lot of time with this one, but... 
Uh, never tolerate even the smallest lie, not a fib, not any form of deception. You want to find that and you want to root it out and you want to identify it. You don't need to shame the child, but you want mm -hmm. them to identify that this so is like wrong. shining light on it. <laughs> shining so, light so that they can <clears throat> see it. So that not everyone, you're not really trying to humiliate the child, yeah. Yeah. but make it make it in a private setting because you know sometimes children will lie because they feel mm -hmm. pressured by external um, sources, maybe friends or other adults, mm -hmm. or they're uncomfortable or you know a so, defensive mechanism. Yes, yes, and so sometimes it's better to remove the child from that situation quietly. And then have a private conversation so that, because when you're dealing with hum, being humiliated and lying, I mean, it does all kind of go together, but it's, it's easier to work on one thing at a time. You know, we've said before that uh, we want ALC, or the church we go to, to be a safe place to fail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you've said it just now, you're not here to shame them. You want, right. if, if, if you make a mistake, you just want people to be with you to help you overcome that mistake. Right. Yes, sometimes you need a SWAT. Sometimes you need some correction. But you, most people are not evil. Right. Uh, you just need to identify. But if they learn, start learning to use the technique of lying and deceiving mm -hmm. to get through life, that's a danger. It is a danger. It is. Okay, our next one. Pick someone out of, it says, the newspaper or online or someone you know who has committed a crime. Ask the child's opinion about it. You know, that's, that it's very enlightening to do that because a lot of times, first of all, <laughs> the child, depending on their age, doesn't have a real good um, concept of even really what went on. And they have questions. Children have questions. And they're, man, they hear everything. And so whether, it, it's, it can even be the smallest of situations. It doesn't have to be a crime. Okay, it doesn't have to be a crime. But what it does is you're getting the children's opinion out on how something should be handled. And if it was handled in a, an honorable way. It's really kind of interesting. So those are really good conversations to have. So when something happens, it could even be a neighbor or you know, someone, it, it doesn't matter what it is. Pick that situation and have that discussion with your child. Because then you can kind of discuss all the little finer details so that they can really determine how they feel about it. And then they'll know how you feel about it. And you can influence their thoughts in a healthy manner. So, Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be good. All right, this next one is number seven, and it's fathers. Never allow your sons to be disrespectful or rude to their mother. Now, uh, this is an area where I really shined at in a sense. Not yes, the, not that the is fact, true. But, um, matter of fact, maybe I overshined. I might have been a tornado at times. <laughs> but we never allowed our boys or girls, either one, to disrespect their mother. Uh, I, uh, I was an extension of, of mom, and she was allowed to use me in any way she desired to, which is if a child was rude or demeaning her, I would step in and very clarify that. And I have never, well, I've tried not to ever be rude to my wife. It's hard when you're married not to, mm -hmm. not to you know, bite at each other. Some, sure. Excuse me sometimes, but it was not allowed in our family. Mm -hmm. Something else <clears throat> on this, just a, a little side note is, we did not allow our children to hurt each other. So, for instance, in our family unit, our family was supposed to be a safe place. And kids squabble, kids fight. And when they're little, like two and three and four and five, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would come in and one child had bit the other child and the other child bit the other one back. And back and forth they would go. So, it's not, I'm not really talking about that, although I kind of am. But I was very clear. I did not want my children hitting each other or harming the other one. And so it's, it's important as a mom, as a father, it's important to circumvent those type of activities because I didn't want any child of, of mine to grow up thinking it was okay to be physically harmed by another person. Or harm another person. Yeah, or harm another person, even someone close to you, you know, someone in your family. I mean, we don't, we don't harm each other. And no. I just couldn't see that as a, a healthy way to resolve a conflict. And so it, it did make it a lot more difficult for me. I was very involved as a mother because I had to be. You know, when I hear those conflicts getting heated, I didn't send the kids outside to go resolve it on their own because I just didn't feel that they had the skills to resolve those conflicts as effectively or as healthy. And so I always intervened and helped them to come up with a healthier way to resolve a conflict beside hitting mm -hmm. Um, pulling, scratching, biting, screaming at each other. 
I usually play you know, referee there, there's someone. There's a word uh, that I read not too long ago that actually encapsulates that concept. Mm -hmm. It's called parenting. Oh, parenting. Oh, my <laughs> You mean that's an action word? Yes. That's an action word. It's an action word. It's not just a label. That is true. Yes, that's, ooh, that is true. Ooh. But I guess that's that's probably way too in-depth. So. <laughs> that's right. We'll be here for hours. All right. oh, uh, my, my next goodness. one is number nine, and that is take your children to visit their ancestors' graves. Yes. If you know any anecdotes about these ancestors, Take time to share the, a few stories. Now, I, you know, I don't think either one of us are perfect at this, but we do have a sprinkling of this in our family. Our, uh, My family, my side of the family, is buried in uh, Turtle Creek Cemetery in Kerrville, Texas. Back probably four or five generations at least, yeah. before yeah. the Civil War. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that seems to be that long ago, 1800s. So um, we could we've been back there probably three times, mm -hmm. but our kids know the connection. They can go through and mm. see our family name, with, which is Denton on my mother's side. You can go see all the Dentons statues and all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then in the historical records, we've got a couple of books here or a book on this shelf that talk about when our family moved there and how it worked right. through that. And then we also have in. Um, uh, St. Jerome's uh, Cemetery in San Antonio has a whole lineage of hustlages buried there because we moved from Missouri to Texas. So I know these things, but you know we're only uh, hustlages are only four generations from Germany. So my I, the idea is how they came over, and the first man was Joseph Hustlage, and it went <laughs> on through that whole system. Well, the idea is to connect your kids up with some of those memories. Yes. And, and in doing so, I mean, even even I think that's important, but even as important is to make sure that you take your children to family gatherings. Make sure that you, you interact with cousins and nieces and nephews and uncles and aunts. And, you do that, too. You know, and make, make sure to make those connections because, you know, we don't live forever. We just don't. We don't live forever. We're here on planet Earth for 80 years, 90 years, 100 years if we're if we're incredibly blessed and have a very long life. And, and if not, it could be shorter. And, and those moments are priceless. And those relationships are priceless. You know, when I'm when I'm 100 years old or if I'm dead and gone, I want to make sure that my children not only have their, their brothers and sisters, but they have cousins as well. I want those connectivity, those, those bounds. You know, I want them bound together with their yes. family. It's important. It right. is important. And that, that has been really cool lately because my uh, my brother-in-law has come up to put a floor in. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law were here. And it's just so nice to be around them. It I is. Mean, you know, you sit up late, sit outside on the back porch, and you tell stories. Christopher has come down already almost every day as we sit outside mm -hmm. and as Uncle Larry tells stories about work and about family and life. You know, in the morning with a cup of coffee, early in the morning or later in the evening. It's just a delightful time. Kind of a weaving of life. Yes. Uh, so that your children's have a future. They It gives them a bigger, better platform yeah. to position themselves up of. And, you know, the good thing. And a thing, good support group as well. <clears throat> yes. And you can sew in integrity. Yes. And that, that's just a great yeah. thing. And then our last one is number 10. Have your children memorize 20 verses, Bible verses, on integrity. And it says mm -hmm. you can start with the Ten Commandments. And there's different ways of doing that. You know, you want you want God's principles on integrity to be the the fabric of their very being. You do. Easy ways to do it. Okay, so you can be a part of Bible quiz. Okay, that might not be easy, but it's pretty labor intensive, but it's phenomenal. What what could you want better for your kids? Nothing, because that's incredible. Bible quizzing is incredible. But there's other ways to do it too. I mean there's little songs like like this one. Number one, we've just begun. God should be first in your life. Number two, the golden rule. God's, those graven images aren't yeah. nice. And you can just keep going. I mean, I can sing all of them. But, um, but there's a lot of ways to teach integrity by using scripture verses. Excellent. Great song. We'll do a video yeah. just you singing the song. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, what it is, it takes you through the Ten Commandments. And then another one right. is the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. The Lord's Prayer, sure. our Father, which art in heaven. Every child should learn those so that they are a structure by which they... And right there, between it those teaches two, integrity. there's your 10 yes. verses. Amen. Uh, Psalms 1-1. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, how does that start? Psalms 1, verse 1. <laughs> You're looking uh, right uh, up. Go blessed ahead, is the man that walketh not in Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of no, uh, standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the in seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law doth he de- meditate. meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of waters, which means a lot of water. His leaf shall not <laughs> wither, and whatsoever. What do you do? Show. show prosper. There you go. Whoa, that's been a rusty one. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. Many, well, many years, probably. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, we want you to know those are the 10 ways to teach your children's integrity. Yes. Uh, it, once we get a way to be able to put the paperwork up there with you, we will figure a way to do that eventually. We have, we have gone miles in, yeah. our, in our video production since we started. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this. If you have any Absolutely. questions, you can Facebook it. Uh, we try or to go Texas back to uh, Texas is better. It. His phone works now. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I got me a little tiny little backup phone. A little Motorola phone. <laughs> yeah, and I'm making it work. <laughs> and it is working. Yes. Well, God bless you. Let's close in prayer right quick. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and your mercy and your anointing. Always, God, I thank you for your love and your mercy and anointing. Be with every one of us, those that are closed in, those that are looking. Lord, bless us and give us direction. And you're doing great things. We look forward to Sunday morning. And we look forward to that life of living for you every single day. Make the best of today, Lord, in our lives, Lord. Help us to find you and adore you. In Jesus' name, amen.